Hey everybody, I'm Gardner, your friendly neighborhood developer advocate. Uh, today we're gonna talk about setting up a VS Code instance in the cloud. We're actually gonna use an open source project called Code Server. And uh, this will let you have basically uh, your entire development um, ecosystem, your, your entire development setup in the cloud so that you can access it anywhere you want, any, anywhere you have an internet connection. Uh, so let's get started. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. You can also hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on Linode. Uh, but let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually create a Linode. So we'll run through this process real quick. We've done this many times before. I'm gonna choose uh, uh, Newark, New Jersey, since that's the closest one to me. Uh, and one of the things we need to do is actually set up a uh, Linode with at least two gigabytes of RAM. But you can see over here, it says one CPU. The minimum recommended setup uh, needs to have at least two cores. So we're gonna go ahead and select the Linode four gigabyte, which has two cores. You can see right here and right there. Oh yeah, and we'll select, uh, we'll select uh, Ubuntu here as well, just cause Ubuntu LTS is like the most supported version. Let's call this development server and we'll give it a password and we'll hit create. Oops. And we'll just call it development server. Now we'll wait for uh, the Linode to actually provision itself. And when it's done, we'll be able to set up a uh, code server on this machine. Now what we'll want to do is open up a terminal here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see what we're doing. All right, now we're gonna SSH into this machine. So SSH root at 45.33.88.239, which is the number right here. This is the IP address of the Linode we just created. And we'll say yes, because it's our new Linode. And we'll enter the password that we set up during the setup process. And there we go, we're logged in. Now, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is actually uh, in the uh, code server documentation. So let's go over to there. We'll go ahead and we'll skip to step two because we've already set up our server. So let's first go ahead and copy this and paste that right into our terminal. Now, some people will tell you not to do that, um, but I trust these guys. <laughs> All right, so that looks like it worked. So now we're gonna go back and we're going to copy this one instead. This is actually going to install it. This is, was a dry run, as you can see right there. So we'll go ahead and paste that into our terminal. And Looks like it's doing it. Now you can see here that we actually have a systemd service available to us uh, that was created by this package. And what this is gonna do, what this command will do is it will have code server uh, switch to the user that is currently logged in via SSH. Uh, so Basically, if you log in over SSH as the root user, then code server is gonna run as root. <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new user account. So let's go ahead and do sudo user add, and then let's just say code user. You don't have to do sudo if you're root. I did. <laughs> you can also do pass wd code user and this will create a new password for the user. So this will allow you to log in. Um, now we have a password associated. So now we wanna make the code user that we just created uh, have pseudo privileges. So we'll go sudo by sudo. And we'll scroll down here. So here let's type in code user and then we'll just do all equals all, all, all. And that will allow our new user to actually run the sudo command. And we'll hit control X and then uh, hit Y and hit enter and that should close and save the file. Uh, again, I'm running as root. You don't have to type in sudo if you're running as root, but uh, if you aren't running as root, that will help. <laughs> All right, so now let's do su and then code user. So now we can run the command from earlier uh, and we can just paste that in here. And this is going to enable uh, code server to run as the current user. So now we'll hit enter and we'll be asked to type in our password. And there we go. We've enabled code server to run 
at the startup of the of the machine. Now, uh, if you don't want Code Server running in the background all the time, uh, you can actually skip that command and just type in Code Server, just like this, and it will launch Code Server uh, as it's as a as a process for the current user. So now, if we type in sudo system ctl status code server at dollar sign user, you can see that we actually have code server running. So we can hit uh, Q to quit. We'll clear the screen. Now what we need to do is actually, uh, we can quit out and we're back to our uh, local machine here. All right, so now let's try and access it. Let's go over here and copy our IP address and open up uh, this and open up this machine. Now you can see we actually don't have access. And if we type in 8080, which is the port that it's listening on, that also isn't coming up. The reason is that code server is only listening for local network traffic on the remote Linode. So it's not listening for internet traffic for port 8080. So what we have to do is actually open up SSH and we're gonna do uh, root at uh, this IP address, which is the IP address of our remote Linode. And we're gonna do dash uppercase L 8080 colon localhost colon 8080. And what this does is it basically creates a little tunnel through SSH where the remote traffic on 8080 is forwarded to our machine and vice versa. So this is a two way tunnel basically between our local machine and the machine we're connecting to. So if we hit enter, we'll be able to log in. And there we go, we're logged in. Now, if we go over here, this still isn't gonna work because that's the wrong IP address. So if we change this to uh, localhost, we now have access to our code server. Um, now this is filling in uh, a password that's not gonna be correct. So what we need to do now is since we're logged in over SSH, we can actually go to our home directory. Uh, so we'll cd to home uh, code server, code user, I'm, I'm sorry. And you can see here that we have uh, config code server. Now if we ls, we have config.yaml. If we uh, less config yaml, you can see we have a password here. Now we can copy that. And we can paste that in here, here. And now we are logged in. We have code server running on our remote machine. We can create new documents. We can do all kinds of cool stuff here. So we could create this folder here. And we can make a new file. We could call it uh, index.html. And we could just put in a, web, a website here. We could say uh, HTML. We could do head, title, welcome. And now we're able to use code server just like it was running on our own machine, except it's running on the remote machine. That's so awesome to me. I can't even tell you how much that makes me excited. Uh, you can also, uh, if you were to change this to uh, not have a password, you could say auth none and that's still secure because the machine's only listening for local traffic on port 8080 and so you're only logging into it um, when you have uh, the the ssh tunnel going on you can do it the other way actually you can have it listen for internet traffic uh and have it be secured with a password that's far less secure uh i would not do that if i were you uh, but you know, it's up to you. You're welcome to try. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is awesome. And the, the best part about this is once you actually have your extensions set up here, uh, like for example, if I wanted to install ESLint, uh, I could do that. Uh, I can also do uh, prettier code formatter. Uh, you can go in and add the extensions that you normally use in VS Code. Uh, all of the autocomplete, all the IntelliSense stuff that you uh, are accustomed to and have a remote cloud development session that's consistent across all of your devices. So not just on your desktop, but on like a Chromebook that is too weak to actually run an Electron app. Uh, I'm actually going to run it on my 
Librem 5 from Purism. Uh, and if you want to see this whole process, head over to my main channel, uh, Gardner Bryant, uh, and you'll be able to watch how I get this set up on my Librem 5. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you guys are rad. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe hit that like button and notification bell as well to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the node. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.